And English is the leading software of the Western mind, and it's filled with viruses and biases that reflect a very old way of thinking. And so in all our efforts to heal our consciousness, we have overlooked the very instrument of conscious thought and communication, which is the word itself. So since death and life are in the power of the tongue, it occurred to me that we need to upgrade the language. For all of us are instruments of powerful forces and of divine resources of which we have only the barest, if any, awareness. And language, as the conveyor of culture and creation, is one such force. Yet its course responds to our own dictation and many lives have been transformed through optimistic affirmations. So though the mystery of the word is beyond our ken, its power rests upon the tongue of nearly every human citizen of planet Earth. This means that we, collectively, could give the English language new life through rebirth. With high intention and heightened sensitivity to the electrifying activity of creative intelligence, we can amplify our receptivity to the eloquence of an airborne language of elevating words and emancipating metaphor never as yet heard before that can enable us to write anew our genesis. As these uplifting words and metaphors emerge, each succulent syllable may well coalesce to express new combinations of sounds and scents that urge an end to dissension and turn a life once rife with strife into the fulfillment of God's highest intention. For as we flow the sanguine language into this dimension, our every word and phrase will begin to take flesh and to manifest into a grand new world of our own awakened hearts, sublime intention. I think back about how random acts of kindness help deliver us from our blindness and remind us of the sweetness that binds, refines, and completes us through our acts of spontaneous, miscellaneous giving, and how these acts simultaneously elevate our own standards for what we call real men. Since generosity generates prosperity, when we give with an open heart and deep sincerity, the perfection of strangers expressing affection in every direction began with the collection of a few choice words that suddenly occurred to a single individual and then stirred all others who heard it. To be the one to release the dove of peace on a wave of love that lifts us all above our usual sense of separation must surely be the cause for an ongoing celebration. For it is certainly an experience that lifts us well beyond words and beyond anything money could possibly buy. And yet, it is free for all who wish to glorify God's living presence as our human essence and thus to bless the best in the rest of us. But speaking of money, have you heard the exhilarating word turbillion? It means something resembling a world or a firework that rises spirally. Ideally, we all could be tourbillionaires with worlds of words that swirl the world's next revolution. And with a zillion, vermilion, tourbillions of word fire, we could inspire higher consciousness and grant our own absolution 
both the updated aftures and divine locution that blows the mind free of its slavery to the inherent blasphemy that still thunders through the language and now threatens to drag us under toward an ever more miserable yet totally unnecessary destiny. For though so few of us will ever win the lottery, every one of us could be the conduit for a lot of exotic vocabulary and for catalytic mottos that turn on the world. Can you even begin to imagine the cosmic voltage that will be released by our collective pyrotechnic linguistic revoltage? We could just about instantly blow out the circuitry on lies and hypocrisy. We might not yet need to hold the keys to the halls of power. Because the word, it is described in many cultures, sparked the big bang. And since English is the language that's rebuilding Abel's Tower, at this half past eleven hour, we can begin to write life sentences that will not boomerang, but will parole our souls from serving terms that sentence us to limitation and that cause us to forget we've got the power of all creation in the consciousness we hold and on the tip of every tongue. So since most prophecies of old foretell a golden age that soon could come, we can begin to set the stage and to reduce the world's afflictions by speaking out in healing words that can fulfill divine predictions. For since the word is known to have more lasting impact than the sword, and we're created in the image and the likeness of the Lord, it must be our divine assignment to help promote world realignment through a retuning of our language that brings hearts into accord.